Ever wonder how ballerinas manage to dance on the tips of their toes? It takes years of training, remarkable skill, and special ballet slippers. These toe shoes are handmade in what's truly a manufacturing pas de deux, a graceful pairing of traditional methods and modern materials. They sew the toe shoes exterior from three pieces of satin. They cut those pieces using a press equipped with a metal die. It slices through enough fabric at a time to make four pairs of shoes. They also cut a pure cotton lining for each piece to protect the dancer's feet from irritation. This V-shaped piece is called the vamp. It'll become the front half of the shoe. The seamstress extends the V by attaching the two other satin pieces called the quarter panels. They'll form the back half of the shoe. She sews the ends of the V together, making a heel seam, which she reinforces with a rayon ribbon. Then she feeds the same type of ribbon through a special machine that folds it in half over a drawstring. She stitches it to the top perimeter of the shoe. This encased drawstring will enable the dancer to pull the shoe tightly around her foot. Now they put the satin upper onto a wooden form to check the sizing. It's absolutely critical that the height of the vamp be correct to within three millimeters. If it's even slightly off, the top of the shoe will cut into the dancer's foot. The shoemaker nails the cotton lining to an insole on the bottom of the form. The insole is made of rigid cardboard for support, imbued with plastic for flexibility. After trimming off the excess, he glues the lining onto the insole, making neat little pleats. Once the glue dries, he removes the nail and trims the excess pleating to eliminate any bumps that would irritate the foot. Now they sculpt the toe box, the hard encasing inside the tip of the shoe. It's made of papier mache, only instead of paper and paste, they use fabric and paste. Then they soften up a piece of resin coated cotton in water and apply it on top. Next, they saturate two pieces of burlap with paste and apply them one after the other over the cotton. The paste is made of flour, water, starches, and a rubber and plastic based resin that hardens to a semi-flexible state. That's key because the toe box has to be stiff enough to bear the dancer's full weight, yet flexible enough so that the ballerina can move fluidly. Now the final layer of fabric, a piece of pure cotton. They wrap the toe box in plastic wrap to keep the hammer clean as they square off the front, creating what's known as the platform. Then they press the toe box onto a piece of marble to make it completely flat. They verify that the platform is perfectly square. If not, the ballerina will topple over. After letting the toe box dry for 24 hours, they glue the lining over it with contact cement. They trim off the excess, then glue the satin over the lining, forming delicate pleats. They use lighter glue this time because contact cement would stain the fabric. They apply a foam filler to even out the shoe's underside, then coat it with high-strength vinyl glue. They apply the same glue to a sole, then leave both to air dry. 24 hours later, they put them on a heater set to 93 degrees Celsius. This reactivates the dried glue in about half a minute. They apply the sole, then put the shoe in a press for 15 seconds to solidify the bond. Now they can remove the shoe from the form. The sole is made of suede, a material that has just the right amount of grip. It's non-slip, yet still enables the dancer to glide smoothly across the floor. The last step is to glue in a white suede sock liner. 
It cushions the ballerina's foot and keeps it from slipping forward when she's dancing on her toes. 